This is a clip from Seventh Day Truth Seekers video called World Record Polar Circumnavigation Attempt Denied by Google Earth and Flight Radar 24. He was trying to trace the path that the One More Orbit flight took uh, around the poles last week, and he got a little bit confused why Google Earth was given this odd result. So you can see he dropped a point here in Florida, dropped another point over in Astana, and then followed the route all the way around back to Florida. He was expecting this line to go up towards the poles over Greenland. Instead, it goes through Spain. And the reason for that is really quite simple. It has to do with how Google Earth handles large polygons if the sides are too long. If we go back into Google Earth here, we can try to draw a polygon and show what the problem is. If we draw a random polygon here with some relatively large sides, the line joining each of the points is a great circle line. It's the shortest distance between those points on a globe. If, however, you try to fill that polygon and the lines are too long or the points are spaced too far apart, Google Earth does not handle that very well. You can see that the lines have shifted as soon as you fill the polygon. That's what it should look like. And there you see it's distorted. So what he needed, he needed just an outline of a polygon to see where that track was going to be. And we can look at what that would look like here. I'm going to use the measuring tool to draw the polygon first and then play around with filling and not filling it later. So we'll start here at the Cape. He went directly to Astana, skipping the North Pole. We'll follow his, uh, his lead to see what we end up with. Then he went to Mauritius. Then he went to the South Pole. Then he went to Punta Arenas. And that closes the loop. So I'll save that. It's going to create a polygon for us. I'm going to make the color a little bit different. So you can see that it does, in fact, do what he was expecting it to do from Florida to Astana, which is go up towards the North Pole. It doesn't cross the North Pole because he didn't, he didn't put a point on the North Pole. But it does give you the great circle between Florida and Astana. Now, if we take this polygon and we try to fill it, which is what he did, he had a filled polygon, you see that with these very long distances between points, that's when you get this odd curve going down over Spain. And if we look at the South Pole, you'll see this very strange curve here. If we just take the outline of the polygon, no problem. It now looks correct. That's the way it's supposed to look. So there you go, Seventh Day. That's how you do it. Now what we're going to do is add the North Pole since he skipped it. And now we have the direct point-to-point -point distance between all the points on that record set in flight. Now, of course, this isn't exactly the route that they flew because oftentimes it's not possible to fly a direct point-to-point -point route. So we do have the ground-based ADS-B tracks available. We can turn those on. You can see the yellow is the point-to-point, -point, and these colored lines are the ADS-B tracks. So this is actual data being received by ground-based receivers that tell us exactly where the airplane was 
wherever it was within range of ground base receiver. So this little white section here was a loss of coverage. This little white section here was a loss of coverage, but you can see that in North America, their route was quite close to the straight line route. We lost coverage here for the crossing of the pole, and then it was regained here, entering the north coast of Russia. And once they left Astana, you can see they took a route that took them around Afghanistan, down through the Middle East, and along airways down into Mauritius. Once they left Mauritius, the ground-based ADS coverage was lost here. And they were picked up again on the ground-based ADSB here. Once they left Punta Arenas, you can see that they didn't follow a straight line, the shortest distance. This route follows airways through South America. So we'll turn off the straight line distances and we're gonna be left with just the ADSB tracks. And we can sort of fill in the gaps here over the North Pole because we do have a picture from the crew that they tweeted as they were approaching the North Pole that shows that here's the airplane on their navigation display in the cockpit. It shows that they were leaving a position 70 degrees north, 81 degrees west, heading towards a position 75 degrees north, 81 degrees west. And then after that, they were going to 80 degrees north, 81 west, 85 north, 81 west. And it's hard to read it here, but that says N-O-P-O-L, no pole. That's the waypoint code for the North Pole. They got to the North Pole, made a right turn to a fix called a berry, and then a left turn. Now, why would they make a right turn to a fix called a berry and then a left turn? Because if we look at the chart here, this is Jepson. FD, which is an aviation charting application, you'll see that we've recreated their route from 85 north, 81 west to Nopal, right turn to Aberi, and then a left turn after Aberi. So these, each of these lines here is a predefined route called an airway. This airway is called Dima 165. And it appears that they went from the North Pole to Aberi to join this Lima 165. Here's a berry. Lima 165 goes down into northern Russia and their ADSB ground based, the ground based uh, ADSB track resumed somewhere in this area here. So it looks like they made that turn just to join this airway to enter Russia. So, with that information from their nav display, we can. Uh, sort of recreate that part of the route, and it would look like this. And continue to the North Pole, the right turn to a barrier, and then the left turn along the airway until it rejoined the um, ADSB track that we have. Similarly, for the South Pole section of the routing, We do have a photograph that the crew tweeted as they were approaching the South Pole. Shows that they were at 80 degrees north, 58 degrees east, sorry, 80 degrees south, 58 degrees east, which is the waypoint that was behind them here. And they're heading to the next waypoint is 90 degrees south, zero degrees west. That's the South Pole. Once they got to the South Pole, they were gonna make a right turn to 85 degrees south, 71 degrees west. You can see they're at 43,000 feet at this point. And the static air temperature, this is the outside air temperature, is minus 80 degrees Celsius. So based on this information, we can also fill in the gap for the southern part of the route. And it would have looked like this.
Thanks for watching.